Welcome back. Today I want to introduce you to one of my favorite tools for running. And this is a free calculator uh, and it'll calculate your V dot score. And a V dot score is a way to look at uh, relative running performance. And one of the reasons I really like V dot scores is it's all about performance. It's different than VO2 max, relative VO2 max, which will be changed by your weight. A V dot score doesn't care who you are, how much you weigh, what your lean body mass is. It just gives you a score for your performance over a distance. And this is really useful. I've used this to evaluate athletes' uh, strengths and limiters, uh, looking at short races to long races. And I've also looked at fresh running races versus off the bike triathlon performance. Not looking for equivalence, just looking for how much the athlete loses as they go longer and as they fatigue. So compare a fresh 10K to a off the bike 10K. And, and it's just, a, I like to track all these little da data points and just look uh, and get a feel for that athlete's profile and ask myself, look, is this athlete's stamina limited or is this athlete have actually a, a threshold limit or a VO2 limit in terms of raise the roof training if we're going to need to be doing that? Or is it just a case of we need to be patient and just focus on easy, steady endurance as well as some strength work? And it'll help you with deciding the training mix that you're going to give yourself or if you're a coach, the athlete. So let's dig in. We're gonna use a case study. My son ran his first 5K uh, in April. And his profile is similar to one I've run into a lot of times uh, with adult athletes. And so I thought we could dig into that and see what we can learn. Uh, just give a little practical instruction. So he's running at Boulder and he did a 5K in 21 minutes and 17 seconds. So that's an average pace of 415 per K. And if you prefer miles, you can convert, you can use miles. And if you had a 10K data point or any other data point, you could just pick that uh, there depending on what you want to do. But we're going to use the 5K. And then we click calculate and we come down here. And what it does is it gives the equivalent V dot score for different distances. So as the distance increases, you'll see the pace per kilometer slows. And so this 5K is roughly equivalent to a 44 minute 10K. And then something you should be aware of is as you go further from your benchmark race, the information is gonna be less um, useful to you. So this 5K is gonna be most useful right around here, the 10K and the three mile and the two mile. I wouldn't, you know, uh, my son's not gonna be running a marathon anytime soon. He's not even gonna be running a half marathon anytime soon. For these longer benchmarks, you're really gonna need to be using race simulation type workouts to get a better feel for what your core pace should be. I wouldn't plug a 5K in and then start using that for your uh, marathon training. I would do that bottom up. Likewise, your aerobic threshold pace, your pace, you know, your talk test pace, another way to look at it, uh, would not be a great way to predict these 5K performances and these 10K performances. You're much better off doing some race simulation sets. And you'll find those in my Substack. Uh, I'm publishing the first edition of an article that's going to guide you uh, towards building your run profile. That's going to drop this week. And then we're going to do an advanced version of that. John Hellemans and me have been exchanging some ideas there. So let's come back up. So equivalent. The other thing I want to point out is you can get training paces from your VDOT scores. And if you read uh, Daniel's book, uh, you can get into what each of these training paces mean. When you see easy in uh, Daniel's running method sense, it's not necessarily easy when I'm speaking about easy run training. Uh, something I've found is if you use your 5K pace to generate your easy, it uh, for many people will actually end up being more almost like a tempo type pace. So you, you have to use your bottom up methods for it rather than your short 
benchmarks. But it gives you some ideas in terms of what these different paces are. And if you have a 5K result and you're thinking about doing threshold training as well as interval training or fast rep training, this is a great way to give yourself some pace uh, suggestions for your main set. So if you have a main set in mind, something like 10 200s, uh, and you want to do them at your fast rep pace, how fast is too fast and uh, how fast would be appropriate, appropriately fast for that type of set, this is a great way to kind of start that process of going through those paces. Now, one other thing I want to show you is, well, we got race paces, and this is the equivalent pace over shorter distances. So in other words, if, if I said to my son, look, I want you to run five by 1K at 5K pace, and I want you to do an easy 200 in between each of those Ks, would slide down, and it would be 415K pace. Now that's relatively easy, but if I said I want you to do five 800s, and I want a 200 float after each 800, then the equivalent pace, the same pace, the 5K race pace, would be 324. And so this section is useful if you have a benchmark and you want to do segments of the benchmark on rest so that it's not as stressful on your body. So you can roll up time at that velocity, but not put yourself as deeply in the red as if you were doing the full 5K in one go. Now, one other thing I want to show you here is altitude. So I live in Boulder, Colorado. I'm up at altitude. And if I'm going down to sea level, I might be curious what the equivalent pace is. But what happens much more commonly is runners with sea level benchmarks are going to be coming up to Boulder to compete or Utah or anywhere around the world. And you're, they're trying to figure out, well, what's the equivalent of my sea level performance uh, so that when I take it out in my race, I don't take it out too hot, put myself deeply in the red and, and, and ruin my, my race day. So this is a nice little thing. So this will give you an idea. So if this was a sea level benchmark for the athlete and they were coming up to Boulder, then it says you lose about 10 seconds a K. Uh, likewise, if you click reverse and we're going down, now that my son has a sea level, sorry, has an altitude benchmark, if he was going down to sea level and he was curious how fast would be too fast, well, roughly it's a 406K that he's proven at altitude. And then when he goes down to sea level, he should be able to go a little bit quicker. So that's a neat little conversion feature if you're looking for that for your races. So we're gonna be digging deeper into this uh, with my Substack using these tools to build up your overall run profile for you so to guide your faster training and your sustained race pace training. More to come on that.